Now with all our drivetrain components in place, let's connect them together. Connecting our drivetrain together entails creating a loop where two distinct streams can be observed. A downstream transfer of torque to the driven wheels and an upstream transfer of load to the engine. Because of how intertwined the drivetrain components will be, it makes sense to create a standalone vehicle script to coordinate the transfer of data between the scripts as well as define the script execution order, which will go as follows. We will first update the engine script and pass its output to the clutch, where the transferred torque will be calculated. Then, the gearbox will be updated and the transferred torque will be multiplied first by the gearbox's gear ratio and then by the differential's final drive. Finally, we'll update the wheels and split the power between our driven outputs, where the torque will induce an angular acceleration and update our wheel's angular velocities, which will be collected by the differential and multiplied by first the final drive and then the gearbox gear ratio before being sent to the clutch to update the difference in speed between the engine and transmission, which will create a drive load that is transferred to the engine, where we can once again update the engine and repeat the cycle. Create a new script called Vehicle and open it up along with every other script created thus far. This vehicle script will act as a center for control for all vehicle components, and thus, we must partially rewrite all components to allow for this behavior. As always, if you get lost throughout this process, I recommend cross-checking with the GitHub project found in the video description, starting with the Visuals script. Change the main update loop to be public and rename it to Update Visuals, and pass in an argument for delta time, and add a public initialization method at the top, passing in a wheel and steering reference as we will now be defining these from the vehicle script. Make sure to change the delta time variable in the update loop over to the past in argument before switching over to the steering script. Like the visual script, add a public initialize method and pass in arguments for the wheelbase, rear track length, and turning radius before making the main loop public and changing its name to update physics and passing in the player's steering input as an argument. Make sure to private the old member variables and comment out the old steering input calculations. In the engine audio script, we're simply going to rename the start and update loops and make them public so that we can control them from the vehicle script. With those out of the way, we can start modifying the drivetrain components. In the engine script, first comment out the starter and throttle inputs as we'll be piping those in from the vehicle script, and then make the start and update loops public after renaming them. For the update physics loop, Add four arguments for delta time, throttle and starter inputs, and the load torque coming from the rest of the drivetrain. Comment out the input calculations and modify the rev limiter code slightly like so. Next, subtract the load torque from the net torque output of the engine. This effectively connects the engine to the rest of the drivetrain. Finally, don't forget to change all the delta time and input references over. And make sure to make the angular velocity member variable public, as we'll need access to it in the rest of the drivetrain. Moving over to the clutch, we're just going to pass over the following arguments from the vehicle and set them accordingly, making sure not to forget to comment out our previous clutch input calculations. Now in the gearbox script, make the start and fixed update methods public and rename them like before, and then comment out the player input and shifting logic as well as their respective member variables, as these will be controlled by the vehicle script. Lastly, uncomment the two functions we created for the drivetrain and add an additional is not shifting condition to both I enumerators. In the differential, simply uncomment both drivetrain functions. In the wheel script, we're going to divide our physics loop into three separate methods. Update physics pre, update physics drivetrain, and update physics post, all public like usual. We will need to do this in order to effectively employ substepping from the vehicle script. In update physics pre, pass in an argument for delta time and only execute the methods responsible for suspension and getting the wheels motion on the ground. Then in update physics drivetrain, pass in both an argument for delta time and the drive torque and execute the methods responsible for friction. In doing so, we're going to modify the calculate longitudinal friction and get wheel motion in air methods. In both cases, we're simply going to take our code out of the for loop and comment out the line for calculating drive torque, as that will be piped in from the vehicle script. Finally, in update physics post, we're simply going to execute the method for applying the friction force. With all that done, switch over to our new vehicle script and create variables for delta time and substepping, public references to all our vehicle components, variables to store our inputs, 
and public variables to set our vehicle's dimensions. In the start method, initialize all our components and pass in their respective argument variables. In the update method, we're going to update all our player inputs. Now in fixed update, create three for loops that correspond to the pre-drivetrain, drivetrain, and post-drivetrain update scheme we created. And in the first loop, loop over our steering scripts and the first part of our wheel physics. In our drivetrain loop, we're first going to update our engine to get its torque output before passing it to our clutch, where we'll feed in both the engine and transmission angular velocities by running the wheel angular velocities through first the differential and then the gearbox. Then after updating the gearbox, we'll update our wheel's drivetrain related components, passing in our drive torque by taking the clutch's output and then running it through first our gearbox and then our differential functions. Now in our last for loop, simply update the wheel's post drivetrain method. Finally, in the late update method, we're going to update our visuals and engine audio. Save all scripts and head back into Unity. Again, I recommend cross-checking your code with the GitHub repo found in the description if you run into any bugs throughout this process. In Unity, attach the vehicle script to the vehicle and pass in our engine, clutch, gearbox, differential, wheels, steering scripts, visuals, and engine audio before setting our input sensitivities and vehicle dimensions, and then hitting play. If all has gone well, you should now be able to drive.